Hello, and welcome to episode 5 of Project Milano. There's been a lot going on since the last episode of Project Milano. I've now set up a second channel for all my RC car builds, which I hope you'll also subscribe to. As well as my day-to-day business creating detailed pewter aircraft, I also run the local model club and show. I'm currently working on setting up two further model-related projects, which I hope to share with you very soon. But all this model-making activity doesn't mean I've been slacking on Milano. Far from it. Since the last episode, I've been hard at work on the CAD files, and finally have some test prints to show you. In the last episode, I made a good start on the files, getting the main elements of Milano roughly blocked in. I need to do this to check the size, shape and placement of the parts, before I start to refine them and add detail. All the parts of Milano are complex shapes, interlocking at a variety of angles. This makes it hard to set up a datum to orientate the parts, unlike Slave 1 and the APC. The lack of source information doesn't help either, but I do have the concept art for the top and bottom views of Milano, and these help a lot. I still have to cross-reference against relevant movie stills, but they're few and far between. Concept artists get their ideas from a wide variety of subjects, and the deeper I dive, I see more references to their inspiration. The design, layering and folding of the wings has a lot in common with a modern multi-tool. Mechanical watch parts are also referenced as part of the mechanism. Here's a rough breakdown of the processes involved in designing and building a project like Milano. Once the project's been chosen, I then have to decide how I'm going to produce it. Sure, it's going to be 3D printed, but these big builds have a lot of structural issues, and that fundamentally affects how the model is designed. Different processes and materials have their own strengths and weaknesses. Careful planning at an early stage can help reduce problems later. Breaking the build down into sub-assemblies makes the whole build less daunting, as the project is reduced to manageable chunks which can be treated independently of one another. I still have to be very careful and mindful, as the sub-assemblies do need to connect with each other. Fortunately, Milano breaks down pretty cleanly into seven main units, which I can work on independently. Each of these sub-assemblies are then broken down into parts, and this is where things get very difficult, but we'll come to that later. Once the parts and then sub-assemblies are complete, the model can be painted, markings added, and the Milano finally mounted on a stand. Then the build will be finished, but that's a long way off. That gives you an idea of the overall process, but it's only part of the story. Let me explain the nightmare that is designing a part for Milano. The most important stage is getting the source information. For Milano, this is a big problem. There's a definite lack of information out there for Milano, which is what makes the build so slow. I start by creating basic block shapes for the parts to get an idea of size, proportion, fit and orientation. When I'm happy, I then refine the part, frequently referring back to the source information, checking the part still looks correct. Then I add the finer details. In some instances, I have to get a bit creative and use my imagination to fill in the gaps, but that's a last resort. Then it's on to test printing and test fitting the parts together before they can be signed off. Of course, at any stage new information can crop up. Often part of a single frame can have just the right angle to change how you see a part, and then it has to be updated. Sometimes it's a small change, sometimes it's back to square one. I reckon at least 40% of my time is spent trying to decipher the limited information I have, 20% designing in CAD, and the final 40% redesigning, correcting, and adding detail. It can take days just to get a single part right, so it looks correct and fits to its neighbour. Over the coming months I'll be spending a lot of time at my PC, designing Milano, and after my earlier video, I think Flexispot took pity on me again. They've recently released their new chair, the C7 Air, and sent me one for my office. My current chair is a bit like a comfy pair of slippers. Okay, it's a bit of an antique relic, but it has lasted me for years, and maybe I do deserve an upgrade. The C7 Air arrived in a massive box, and was really well packed. The first thing that struck me was the weight of this thing. The C7 is built to last, and everything is really robust. I guess all the adjustable features are why it's so heavy. You certainly get a lot for your money. Sitting at the right height when you're working is so important for your health and productivity. Investing in a decent comfortable chair that gives you good support is something we just don't take seriously enough. It's one of those things you think, I don't need that, but when you do get one, you wish you got it sooner. 
It's really easy to put together, with clear instructions, and it looks really cool. You can adjust so many aspects of the C7 Air to make it comfortably fit your body. It even reclines, which helps you relax when you're trying to work out how to fit that pesky thruster into the lower wing of Milano. If you're looking for a decent chair for your office or studio, then visit flexispot.com and check out the C7 Air. There's a link and promo codes in the description, so you can pick up your own C7 Air and work in comfort. I'm using mine right now, and love it. OK, back to Milano. After a few weeks, and this is where I'm at. Let's start by taking a look at the main thruster. This I designed so it could be easily painted, with plenty of variety of colour and weathering, so it would look great illuminated. This consists of a central core, which sits behind a cover, which has a lot in common with the clutch from the car. On top of this sits an outer frame, which attaches to the body of Milano. These parts took about five days to design, with most of the work being in the outer frame. There's a lot of complex geometry going on here, and getting everything to sit just right took quite a while. There's another thruster that sits in one of the wings. This is a smaller version of the one we just looked at, but with a few tweaks. It also has a cover. The wings have a lot going on. They all attach to the main central fixed wing. To this central wing, the other three attach to the back, top and bottom. There are a lot of crazy shapes going on with these wings, especially the main wing, and these took a long time to get right. The upper disc to the main wing took two redesigns before I worked out what was going on with the original. The smaller thruster sits in the lower wing, and the larger one fits in the main body of Milano, but connects to the lower wing as well. Did I mention this is a very complicated build? I like to work up renders of the build at stages to try and gauge the overall results of my progress. I'm really happy with the wings so far. They look just like the movie, but I still have lots of detail to add. Panel lines, cutouts and hinges will add another level of detail to these parts, but that'll come later. For now, progress is good, but so far we only have a CAD model, nothing physical. Let's do something about that. Time to fire up the printer. I'm going to be printing Milano on my Elegoo Jupiter SE. First of all I need to import and prepare the parts in the slicer. I'm using Chitu Box, which I gave a brief review of in my previous Milano episode. Here's the main wing, hollowed with drain holes and supported in the slicer. This part is huge. It's 39cm long, or 15.5 inches in American, and it's a bit of a gamble for printing, but I'm feeling lucky. It only just fits on the build plate, with no room to spare. I'm printing at 50 micron layer height, and the wing will take about 24 hours to print. The three other wings get the same treatment, hollowed and supported, again at 50 microns. Finally, the thrusters are the last to be printed. These should be the simplest parts to print. Everything looks great in the slicer, let's hope it all prints OK. The next problem is, what resin do I print Milano with? There are so many resins to choose from these days, but as I'm concerned about the weight, structural integrity, and the vulnerability of the sticky out bits on Milano, I decided to check out the ABS-like resins that are now available. Elegoo have a great range, and their latest 8K ABS-like 3.0 should do all I need. I went for Space Grey, which seemed appropriate. Seriously though, darker colours, while they can take longer to cure, are easier to prep for paint, as you can see the blemishes much more clearly. These resins are designed to be printed at 20 to 25 degrees centigrade. I live in England, and we don't see those temperatures very often. This is a problem which I mentioned in episode 4. Previously I had the Jupiter SE in my workshop, but I've now bought it inside, which should help stabilise the temperature. Elegoo do sell a heater to keep the build chamber at the optimum temperature, but as it attaches to the removable hood of the Jupiter SE, I was reluctant to go down that route. Instead, I upped the exposure time. I found the temperature problem is only a factor on the initial layers, so just increased the exposure time for those and left the rest. Let's see what we've got. I started with the main wing, and this is the result. It's perfect. Lots of support, hollowing, and a massive footprint to secure it to the build plate were the key to a successful print. As you can see, the edges are clipped back as I totally maxed out the Jupiter SE build volume, but the print is perfect. This part is massive and bodes well for the rest of Milano. The three other wings were no problem after the first one, 
they all came out straight and true. This resin and printer combination works really well for these massive parts. I can see no distortion either, which is always a concern, especially on long straight geometric parts. The thrusters were a bit of a labyrinth of supports, but they're necessary for a successful print. The parts were all thoroughly cleaned in IPA. The Elegoo curing station's too small for these, so I had to go back to my bucket. Then it's time to break away the supports. Always a fun task. The parts haven't been post-cured, as it's easier and cleaner to remove the supports before curing. Unlike regular resin, the ABS seems a bit brittle when breaking off the supports, but let's see how it performs on the finished parts. The rest of the wings had their supports removed in the same way. Quick and easy. They were followed by the thrusters. Let's check out the parts and see what we've got. They're fantastic. Printing at 50 microns is certainly the way to go for these parts and this resin. The layer lines are nearly invisible, with minimal islands due to the screen resolution. I'm a very happy bunny. With a bit of cleaning up, the main thruster goes together really well, and can be easily painted to pick out all that detail. Let's put everything together and see what we've got. These may be just test prints, but they only needed minimal fettling to assemble. The upper wings hinged, and for this I've allowed for a 3.2mm rod, cut to size. The wing thruster assembles well, and fits into the wing perfectly. There is a channel for wiring, so this can be illuminated at some stage. And here it is, all finally together. But let's just see how strong this Elegoo ABS-like resin really is. Wow, this stuff's amazing! That gives me real confidence to use this resin in the rest of Milano. I'll have to be careful about the fine detail, but I think this is certainly the way to go. Milano will be in 1-48 to scale, but how does a figure relate to the parts we have so far? This is an RAF pilot figure in 1-48 to scale and helps us understand how big the parts would be in reality, and what level of detail we should expect on the model. The thrusters are already pretty well detailed, and with paint, weathering and lighting, will be just fine, but the wings are another matter. You'll have noticed there are no panel lines on the wing surfaces. I wanted to check the test prints first before I committed to panel lines, and potentially had to redo a lot of work. Referring back to the concept art and movie stills for confirmation, I came up with a plan for the panel lines on the wings. There were a few areas where there was no information, but as long as I kept to the same style, we should be golden. There's a lot of lines and detail to add to these wings, but I'll come back to that later. These are only test prints, and there are areas I want to tweak and improve to make this the best Milano model available. Right now, I need to flesh out the other areas of Milano before I get carried away with the final details. In the next episode, I'll tackle the back section of the main hull with the variable thrusters and main engine. Then we should have all the main sections of Milano basically designed, before I go around adding detail and preparing for final printing. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Project Milano. If you have, please share with your friends and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So you catch my next video when it goes live, click on the bell icon. And don't forget to check out the FlexiSpot website to get your C7 Air and improve your productivity. To learn about some of the techniques I use, check out my how-to series to find out more about moulding, casting, CAD design and 3D printing. If you have any questions about Project Milano, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.